I've always made things. I can't help needing to make things. I have all these ideas and all these things I want to do and such finite amounts of time, it just drives me crazy. I was an only child and my parents were so wrapped up in their own work that I was left to my own devices a lot. The good thing was that they were both really creative people and so being a creative person felt kind of normal in my family. My mother was always enrolling me in classes for anything I showed any interest in. The Christmas I was five years old, one of my parents' music students gave me this wacky board game called Voice of the Mummy. It was great. I became completely obsessed with all things ancient Egyptian as a result of this game. Um, the way it worked was you moved your little Egyptologist around uh, the styrofoam step pyramid and picking up uh, jewels and collecting things. And when you landed on the face of King Tut's mummy mask, then you had to push a button on top on the plastic sarcophagus of the mummy laid out. And, and uh, then the voice inside, it was a record player, um, the voice inside would tell you what to do and where to move and so forth. And being an only child and a complete geek, I played this game all four Egyptologists by myself. I always rooted for blue. And um, I just stared at the artwork on the game and I, I became obsessed with the metalwork from ancient Egypt and I, I wanted to know how they did that. I wanted to understand the technology and I wanted to do it myself. And when I was 22, I found the metalsmithing program at Georgia State University where eventually I got to learn some of those things. I've always known how incredibly lucky I was to learn the techniques that I wanted to know and I've always believed that there are people hungry for that information. I taught classes and workshops for years and I was always thinking about how to get that information to a larger audience. In 2006, I was contacted by Home and Garden Television to be on their show called That's Clever. And I was telling my friend, actor Greg Clarkson about it, and he said, yeah, that's great, but it's 15 minutes of fame. You need to do something bigger. And I told him what I had thought about doing books, and all of a sudden, we looked up at each other and in the same moment said, DVD. It was so outside my comfort zone to think about branching out like that, and to really put myself that far out there. Um, I, I knew instantly there were just vast amounts of um, marketing and things I'd never even really contemplated involved in starting a production and publishing company. I was a single mom then, and I was doing okay for an artist. I, I was actually being fairly successful doing all the things that people said I couldn't do. I worked in a lot more silver than gold. I didn't do the craft show circuit. I sold directly to collectors and through art galleries, and, and I was doing okay. And one day, my son came running down the hallway toward me, and he was about six then, and, and it just hit me like it never had before. What if he wants to go to college? What if he wants to do things neither of us has even dreamed of yet? I can't put my fears of failure or success on him. It's been an amazing journey. I received fan mail from people from all over the world who wanted to learn the techniques that I teach and couldn't find people or places in their own countries to study them. Um, particularly places where, due to economic and political struggles, a lot of the artistry has died out. I, I love making my own work, but nothing can top the extraordinarily humbling and exhilarating feeling of perpetuating what I love. I confess, uh, once I've done something, I'm totally bored with the idea of having to do it again. I, uh, it's as if every piece is a new challenge, and once it's finished, then I want the next challenge and the next set of problems to solve. The past five years, I've 
been putting different techniques, materials, and processes together in ways that haven't been done before. Um, sort of like the concept behind fusion cuisine. So my Eastern Repose work with uh, Unpatterned Mocha Megane has been incredibly rewarding. It's something I really, really love doing. And uh, also I've, I've spent a lot of time designing and, and creating ways for Russian filigree to be um, still abstract and not too traditional in its design, but more three-dimensional. And uh, I've, I've even been experimenting with ways to combine the two processes into single pieces. I've always been in love with handmade books and with calligraphy, so for the past couple of years I've been learning everything I can about these techniques and processes. It's been enormously rewarding to see how my aesthetic and all my previous training as a metalsmith works its way into something so seemingly different and how the shapes that I'm drawn to show up in both forms. However much I love working in paper and vellum, I'm still a metalsmith at heart. And also a magpie, I think. I, I work with all kinds of metallic paints and powders and inks and tons of gold leaf. A and even my ability to do colored pencil renderings uh, for jewelry works its way back into the other styles of art. Um, I, I find that when I go back to metalsmithing, a lot of my pieces start echoing the flourishes in the, the letter forms that I've been learning in um, on paper. More of everything I've been doing. Um, I'm always looking at new technologies and uh, seeking out new techniques both for my artwork and for my teaching. Um, I, I just I hope my hands don't give out before my brain does.